Shall I begin? So we are on to our shloka number nine. Last time we had discussed how uh, the true seeker will approach a master, a mentor who is uh, santam mahantam uh, and upadeshikam. So basically somebody who is a sage-like person and a generous person and expanded consciousness um, at the least and uh, is able to be available to communicate and talk to us. Many times there are some very uh, elevated consciousness possessing uh, sage-like people, men and women, but they may not be at a stage of life where they are available to us. They may be in a private space, they may be uh, meditating more, they may be choosing to remain underground, they may be continuing with their life and its duties very dharmically with poise and grace, but they may not be available to have a discussion with us. They may not be available to give a lecture, they may not be available to come forward in the public, they may not be available to become available, their time, their body, their being. So we are fortunate if we find this and we should plug into it. And we should um, become finely attuned to every word being taught. So, and its meaning, you know. Um, every shabda, every sound, has a deeper meaning and that meaning should ignite contemplation within us for us and our jiva where we are some of us can go to such a teacher and get caught up in the external what is the dress code of the ashram what is the tilak that people are wearing what is the food that is being eaten what kind of seva do i get near the teacher or far from the teacher what is my seating? What is the light here? What is my bag looking like? Right? And we have a very nice, very nice experience. And then we go back and we are pretty much unchanged. We have been talking about that. So the goal is more to get connected to the message of the master than the master's personality or the institution. We have to get connected because we are talking about true spiritual igniting. And then the next shloka is very, this is a very important shloka. It says, Uddhare dhatmanatmanam magnam sansaravaridhav yoga rudatvamasadhyaya samyak darshana nishtaya so, it is saying, by attaining to a state of yoga ruda, by firm knowledge of Brahman, let one rise, one's imp let one raise one's impure mind, steeped in the ocean of samsara or the world, by one's pure mind. So, what they are saying is that, There is a unique state that I will describe today which we spiritual seekers want to be at in our state of consciousness and that state is called Yoga Ruda. Yoga Ruda. And Yoga Ruda is um, a state of mind or a state of consciousness where one is having samyak drishti or samyak darshana which means one is able to have a complete understanding of reality as it is. Because most of the time we see what we want to see. <clears throat> Do you understand? we see our interpretation of the reality. We see
what we want to see and the buddhi tad buddhi that time the buddhi becomes that only if i want to see difficulties battles resistances in this room i will see it if i want to see love generosity openness kindness i will see it i will find it i will connect those dots but one may be nicer than the other qualitatively but they may or may not be the reality are you understanding so samyak darshan is a special quality of the pure mind which is able to gauge the reality as the reality so unique achievement so i sit in conversation with someone and i am able to constantly strip away what are my projections of it 1 2 3 4 sneakily 5 6 7 8 another sneaky one ninth and i keep not attaching to them until i come to the reality which that reality is called brahma brahma the pure expanded undifferentiated one divine supreme consciousness at play if i am able to have that samyak darshan if i am able to have that capacity that drishti that vision that i am able to strip the layers of my projection my virtual projections not only on a given situation but even on myself and i have so many projections number 1 is i am the body number 2 is i am the prana number 3 is i am the mind number 4 is i am the intellect number 5 is i am that bliss in the causal state karma i am a human being is also to an extent a reality because we begin with that and yet it is not the ultimate reality is it yeah, the, the ultimate reality will say that i the supreme undifferentiated consciousness is experiencing myself in this body with this mind through this prana exercising this intellect you understand so what is reality and what is our experience of reality qualifies the difference between one who is a muratma or a samsari jeeva which means one who is caught up in the world and the worldly projections and one who is a yoga ruda means one who has achieved yoga with the internal self so we have such strange understandings of what yoga ruda means or uh, somebody who is sitting in a very difficult lotus position and are going very intense pranayam and kundalini energy is moving up and down and then at that moment some brilliant light comes and that moment one has achieved yoga ruda state but <laughs> shankar is saying na 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 even if somebody has a belief system to go a little deeper into the situation and to themselves they are going deeper and deeper into the yoga ruda state of consciousness so what is this yoga rudra state it is none but the state of the ability to look for search for and then perceive reality and this reality is reality of the kind that once search stops there it is a reality which is supreme which is divine which is unconditional which cannot be punctured and it is not your or mine it is a collective and it is the i and it is one so this reality is what they are saying shankar is saying that when one starts going towards this more balanced understanding 
one is moving towards yoga road state and then one is in that state of always looking for the reality at that time one is one's atman one's self is able to do uddhara or upliftment of one's anatman or non self you understand your own atman can uplift your jiva which is made up of body mind intellect ego and all of that conglomeration so it is saying the order is like this mm -hmm. become a yoga rudra by having samyak drishti or balanced perception balanced philosophical and intellectual and experiential and determined and persistent search strip away till you reach that same reality of brahma that one and then staying there keep keep doing upliftment of this anatman the non self the jiva by allowing the atman which is the self to regulate it now i don't need a counselor a coach a psychiatrist a doctor or someone to spank me now i can uplift me and now we are talking about the spiritual path why does atman need to uplift anatman you understand anatman atman you understand self and non self you understand the concept of atman and jiva right the true self and the worldly personality ego based self anatman why it is needed because shankara says that the shloka says samsar varidho in the ocean of change this world this world this universe has been described as the ocean of ocean of change it is an ocean of not bliss not this not that initially it is an ocean of change and this changing ocean is our existence in fact even our body doesn't remain the same it is persistently changing even as we are sleeping it is persistently aging as we are sleeping our doshas are never in a state of equilibrium our thoughts are never in a state of you know single pointed focus so much work has to be done even for a few moments hmm? then climate is changing culture is changing um partners are coming and going sand dunes are being formed and fallen and landscapes are changing the the himalayas which were under the ocean have become top of the mountain the the topmost mountains the topmost mountains are now lying as reefs under the ocean everything is changing the beautiful young film actresses have now become aged forgotten people dying unknown in hospitals the great politicians have come and gone and conquered and now forgotten the kings who had great desire to win and conquer and make a leave a mark on humanity third fourth grade students are mispronouncing their names in their homework this is samsara or the world and here we try so hard to win to keep to possess and to not allow change how the ego has set itself to be broken hearted to be betrayed even if there is love in our life the love can die even if there is someone's death and we are mourning they can be a birth and we are happy even our emotions change everything changes and so it is an ocean of change and in this ocean of change there are five types of waves vedanta describes and shankara describes 
this ocean of five types of wave the first wave is called klesha or misery we are sitting around not minding our own business and suddenly life incidences occur or somebody's car comes and hits us or a loved one betrays us or dies or this or that or the stock market crashes and a wave of misery and we are drowning. Misery. The second wave is called avidya. This avidya means cosmic nuisance. You understand nuisance? What does that mean? It's a cosmic ignorance of who am I. It's so unique that we are all feeling, sensitive, talking, elocuting, learning and teaching human beings. But we never ask, by the way, why are we all collected here on mm. earth? Oops, ouch. No, uh, excuse, why did I come here? To be a stockbroker, to be a car salesperson. Oh, oh, okay, really? Is that right? To love you. Yeah, now have, you have me. Are you happy? No. <laughs> to eat barbecue sauce with steak. Okay, eat it. Hard uh, burn. So we get all caught up in all of this. And we are lost. We don't know why we are here. And we complain and we hurt each other. And we know, we know the law of karma. We don't need it to be learned. We are learning it for millions of years. Still we are hurting, bashing, beating, crying, complaining, wanting. Desiring. And with every desire feeling like, well that one got fulfilled. Why don't I sneak out ten more? And then out of the ten, the ten got fulfilled. But they leave me unfulfilled. One more. So it's like this uh, social networking site of unfulfilled desires. It grows exponentially. Right? Right? Isn't it? The pyramid structure. You make one friend, one miserable friend. Now you have 3,000 miserable friends overnight. But everybody is liking away and approving away because there is ignorance. Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> ignorance. Just doing, doing, doing. Automated mode. I got a, you got a house, you got a husband, you got a white friend, you got an insurance, you got a boat, you got, I wanted to. Off you go. What is this? Yeah. You became spiritual, you went to the Himalaya, you wore a Rudraksh, you wore a lion skin, you did 1000 mantra. I also want to do it. Off I go. <laughs> so, <laughs> automated, full, foolish ignorance. Avidya. It's a wave, it has come over me. Suddenly, oh I love you, I cannot do without you, I cannot breathe, I have to see you, oh my God. Are you? I am infatuated, I can't think, I, have, I will lose everything, I will die, I will even commit suicide if I don't have you. Are you? Then that person furts, barbs, irritates, scratches, oh I can't handle you, I can't. But why you do it? Then millions of years we do it. Again and again we do it. You do it, you do it, you do it. Hey, I will also do it. Avidya, ignorance. Wave after wave. In fact, this avidya is called anadi, eternal. It has not affected me and you. I am in it too. I am not sitting here on the seat telling you, you have it, I don't have it. That's why we are here. Understand. So first is klesh, klesha, misery. In fact, we can say the first wave should be avidya. Mm. Then in this avidya, we have klesha, misery. We are never happy for long. Have you seen that? Happiness seems to be, I think Shakespeare has said that. Who has said it? That Shakespeare has said it. No? Happiness is, misery is what, happiness comes occasionally. Misery is what is our... Regular feature. Somebody has said it. Thomas Hardy or Shakespeare somewhere. Very nice line. I'm forgetting now. So, then misery. First avidya. Then in this avidya, we start wanting, seeking. We feel unimportant. We feel incomplete. We want material things. We want relational objects. We want power. We want name. And then we have it and we are never done. And many a people on the top of their success shoot themselves. Mm -hmm. Get drowned, take drugs. Hmm? That lady Whitney Houston, right? Musician. Mm -hmm. the top most singer. Uh, why she dies of overdose of drugs. In her bedroom alone. Oh, you 
are you can be anything and the, the rest of the world in avidya is nodding watching so we're all drunk ignorance ignorant about our power ignorant about the purpose of our life which is moksha and freedom this is not the permanent place this is where i have already told you we are like the fishes in the trap some of us are all happy in the trap trying to say these 10 little you know will golden colored trap i want to be here avidya the next wave is misery klesha then asmita asmita means even if teacher tells us we get confused confused between atman and atman you know why they are so fused because anatman body mind they don't have any power they use this puppet that is why you know one part of us gets paralyzed this part of us is suffering this part is not moving so first the consciousness had full body to feel miserable now it has half body to feel miserable but it is stuck huh? still we cannot like see that you know this is just a thing of matter and i am something outside it <clears throat> we can't see it so we get confounded asmita between atma and atma that's why we constantly need to hear and check and contemplate then raga fourth from time to time something feels very good to me some food some alcohol some drug some person some god and i become so attached to it that i lose perspective now forget samyak darshan i only have bias darshan i am so attached to it be it my child be means everybody has child but i am attached to it my whole being quakes at the thought of being far from it separate from it my ego has become invested it is called raga is another wave and we all have gone through it and we are still there attached and then finally abhinivesha abhinivesha means the final is fear of death what happens is not only is the ignorant person wanting to the person avidya miserable avidya person asmita lying in bed can barely breathe barely talk children are neglecting there is no hope but this person will say to the doctor and doctor sir please save my life how long can i live fear of death wanting to hold on to this carcass this body this trunk with my golden clothes this bank account this property <coughs> this anger this fluid this memory this setup and abhinivesha means even in the knowledgeable person even in the person who is being given the knowledge the desire to hold on to this body being is so deeply rooted that it becomes the foundation of all fear in our being so not only <laughs> sometimes people will say i don't want to come to satsang because the fear of death arises in them if i hear all this business i will die can bear it so the this so attachment to whatever is these five types of waves this is samsara you understand samsara world can i use the word samsara now it is the this is called maya this is the maya or the whirlpool it's a whirlpool is the samsara we are, we are born oh new born baby how good baby shower very nice very nice the rishi outside the family says one more has entered the whirlpool sach baat hai na chalo god bless them may they have sad buddhi may they have sad buddhi for 60 70 years of this whirlpool rest of oh baby 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 may you have a happy life do i have a happy life i don't question because i have a vidya 
May you have a joyous life partner. I hate the one I am with. Everybody hates theirs. Will this person? Nobody questions. <laughs> baby, 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 will you have a wonderful, healthy, chubby life? Here is Baby Johnson powder full of chemicals. <laughs> The baby's poop stinks. There must be a reason for it. God wants this baby to stink. Stop making it, putting perfume on it. Nobody thinks. Avidya. Then the baby's ego, anger, depression, now klesha, misery. Even for two-year-old baby, waves have started. Waves. <laughs> and even it is sleeping, it is crying. Five-month-old baby crying, then people say, don't worry, it is past life sorrow. <laughs> Waves have not left the baby also. That is why in the Indian sage tradition, when somebody dies, then there is a party. Chalo, relief. Done. <laughs> <laughs> brave. Very brave. Good job. Go. Lucky you. This is our sage tradition. <laughs> we hanker for death, not birth. It's all upside down. This is called Maya. If you were outside this Maya, you would realize this Loka is not words hankering and crying and holding on to. Wake up! Are you happy? Only live in the hope of happiness? In the keeping the list of when somebody took your happiness away? And Knowing deep down that you are happiness, but you can't exhibit it. Either people don't allow it or you lose it. And it's just... <clears throat> that is why Shankara says, this sansara has these five waves. Before you stop the world, say you are drowning in them one by one. And don't take the wave of misery too seriously. It's meant to be. That is why Aparna was quoting. What was? What did I quote about that backpack and all? Mountain and backpack. Backpack of tears or what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to Iceland, you bring. When you go to Hawaii, you pack a bikini. When you come to this loco, you pack some tears. Get it? So like all this why me business? Of course you. Should have thought better than to be born here. <laughs> but, so now that you are here, Vedanta makes you understand this is happening. Vedanta is not make you feel good, happy, holy kind of spirituality which says, no, 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 be good, wear nice shoes, do some sale of good items, donate this, make that ritual, chant this, and then everything will be good for you. Well, we can't promise now, but after death it will be for which there is no evidence and proof. It's like this is the way it is and in fact in this book itself we will find out how we can shred the Maya and while living on this world we can have a different experience. But until we do that, until we can shred the Maya and know Brahman, pure consciousness, pure divine truth and operate from there, we are suffering, let us not deny it. Let us not deny it. Now this, in that, in a very beautiful poetry, he says, in this ocean there are some aquatic monsters. Aquatic monsters are, you know, have you heard ocean has, have you seen those, have you seen that, uh, those Disneyland uh, cartoons where a very big monster comes in <coughs> underground, no? like Jaws, no? so Jaws 1, Jaws 2. There are some aquatic monsters in this samsar. And so the question is, like who? And they say, like your husband or your wife? <laughs> <laughs> like your kinman and your kit? Here we were thinking, now why they are saying that? They are not saying don't get married. But how these monsters devour us, our existence, our personality, our thinking, our ability to be free, our right to self-determine our destiny. And due to the presence of these aquatic monsters, we get gulped into somebody else's stomach and we forget who we are. So they have been declared as aquatic monsters. Husband, wife, kith, king, property. 
and off we go trying to build that house that castle that project and losing everything and deeper and deeper we are caught and now we are living inside a whale's stomach have you seen those films with a little lamp and a table somebody is living <laughs> i really love those but it always reminded me of vedanta that soon we live in this bubble of somebody else's tummy and they feed us what they eat actually their arm and clay and pachak pit and clay the cuff and all of that we eat it and we feel oh i am getting approval oops they ate something katu i am getting rejection this is our life aquatic monsters property so how no, so i am not saying that i don't care for my father or my husband or my son but what i'm saying is we are no no talking to you as wife and husband we are talking to you as this eternal consciousness bound in the story and crying away when in the reality through samyak darshan you will realize if you look deeper and deeper you will come to the realization that you are as bonded as you want to sit and make it bonded and you are as free as you are always are there never was a bondage and you can be with the same and husband and wife in an unbonded way if i want i can start having dysfunctional relationship and attachment and vp sentimental a uh, control to every student <laughs> or i can feel like you know what let's chill out relax do you understand now so this is this is the samsar this is the mayavi sansar this is the sansar in which the maya confounds us and we all live here we are born we clap we say hooray we all become youthful and we all become arrogant and we all forget that aging is just one decade away we all push away our uncle aunties and cousins and relatives and then when we turn 40 we start wondering where they are looking for their email and going to family album or family tree dot com now we are feeling lonely we all do it why maya so this maya we need to thread and this threading uh, this uh, shankara is saying that you need that and because of this maya we start giving our believing three things about ourselves that i am i am an agnya i am a agnyani i am a non knowledgeable person i don't have knowledge whereas my atman is the rep repertoire i think repertoire of complete knowledge and i start believing that i am a karta i am a doer whereas i am only an observer it is the jiva that is doing and the observer can very much pull back the has power not pull back but it by not observing that area that area becomes non any by okay the difference between observer and actor i need to explain that first the mind doesn't have its own power doesn't have its own chaitanya shakti doesn't have its own consciousness it is working only on borrowed consciousness of the atma it appears animated just like the waves are coming from the tv station broadcast and the animation is happening on the broad tv screen but if we stop that animation the tv screen will become dead are you understanding mm -hmm. so even though you cannot see the waves of the tv they are called what kind of waves some kind of waves they are called short waves i don't know. tv waves mm -hmm. but we say that the tv this is the doer but it is not a doer at all that means mind doesn't have any real power and we are in reality we are sat chit ananda ananda our true nature is eternal i will never die so once 
we start adopting this belief system begins with belief system starts adopting this belief system then we can walk into we can walk around this life feeling fearless and not feeling like i am limited by time being 100% in every moment secondly chitta means i am intelligent that means i will stop subscribing to things like oh but i am mooda but i forgot but i don't know but i will just connect and i will know that i deserve to know because i am all knowing and thirdly i am a uh, bliss i am ananda ananda means that i dropped a very important flower vase it was given to me by my great grandmother etc etc and i cried for 5 minutes and i felt desolate but then i closed my eyes and then i just touched something and then i forgot the words and that's little thing in maya that i lost and i started feeling these waves of well being where is these waves of well being coming because in reality you broke your words worth millions of dollars and of personal value to you because you are a container of infinite bliss so ultimately when you choose to be happy it doesn't come from outside it is not related to outside it is always related to an inner permission to feel it from inside so therefore sorrow and joy really doesn't have anything to do with what is happening outside that is why many times the yogi house may be burning the sadhu's house may be burning but they may be thinking chalo good riddance state of calmness and another person's house may be being built but still we may be feeling angry they didn't get the right marble you see so it's an inner state and vedanta begins with deciding to make a shift uh, making a sankalpa a sacred decision to expand our belief system to know that we are not that limited doer ignorant lost in the ocean compelled to experience the five waves at least we can start observing the five waves and then reacting with least energy spent so therefore it says that samyak darshan which is drishti or the balanced vision is what we are proceeding towards through the study of vedant so when you go to a teacher that teacher teaches you expanded belief systems and vedanta first begins with stripping our either extremely pink colored beautiful views of the so called reality which then ends up disappointing us and we feel injured victim and small or this very very difficult harsh reality instead it tells us don't worry about the reality it's an ocean it's never predictable one wave or the other wave will catch you and if something is really nice pretty soon you'll get attached to it so you're never without a wave instead start being the real one that you are the observer and observe you in the ocean and see what it is doing to you and how you are reacting by default and then you are trying to catch every wave analyze it counter analyze it journal it and write it take it to a psychiatrist and medicate it ha huh? it is not worth it when you observe it half of the power of this virtual non existential serpent falls away because a famous classical example is given which is came up in the last two shlokas ago where it says that if the room was dark and you walked in and you saw a snake you'll get really scared and jump and scream however when the light of knowledge is switched on literally you will laugh and say it was not a snake it is a rope and i have the power to discriminate 
So again Vedanta Vivek Chudamani brings us back to the action of Viveka. Discrimination between the five waves, the way the Maya works and you and what is how you behave in it. So and you gradually develop a detachment. So the word for detachment, I'll continue talking about these things. I only have five more minutes. But detachment is called Vairagya. Have you heard of this word? Detachment. And you know, Western students and Indian students have really gone to town with this word Vairagya. And what they say is, I am detached. I am leaving the world. I am leaving my family. I am leaving my profession. I am leaving my culture. I am changing my religion. Or I am going into the jungle. Or I am standing here and there on one leg. And I have become detached. That's okay. Go ahead. That's good. If you want to learn that. <laughs> but Vedanta says, Are If you left the comfortable bed and you got attached to your hard stubble of tree, how have you given up that bed? You are still, if you are not attached here, you are attached there. This is not Vairagya. If you can sleep on that comfortable bed but not be attached to it, that is Vairagya. Are you understanding? So in the Vedantic, Vedic, classical, Sanatan, Dharma tradition that we represent, Vairagya is never without Viveka, without discrimination. Just people say things like, uh, oh, I will leave the world, you know, I will just, you know, I have detachment. People have taken detachment to such a level, especially in India, Mandarji where there is all this cult of sadhus and teachers and veragis. So if you go, if I go to somebody's home and they kind of know that I give satsang, etc. They will say to me things like, Are Shunya ji, I have two sons. See, one has gone to America, he is studying computer science, he will get a proper job. They have even offered a job in a multinational company, Microsoft, which has its office in India, Silicon Valley, Bangalore. This boy is such a buddhu. He has not even passed his 12th grade. He has not done well. You better take him and teach him some spiritual business. He's very good for detachment. Teach him. <laughs> go, go ahead. Give me the failure. These sadhvi, sadhus are full of just pick up all the failures and bring them along. We'll form a tolly of failures and all the bright people will be the computer engineers. <laughs> I said, hey, it's okay. You keep him. I'll let you know when his time comes. <laughs> Then, Madam, I will send him to America. Let him apprentice with you. He's a fool. He's a fool. <laughs> <laughs> so now, this spiritual tradition has been left for the failures and the fools. But we are saying, but Shankara is saying, the spiritual tradition is for the smart, intelligent people who perform discrimination <coughs> second by second. Is not for fools because then they have become attached to their mala and their outer look. You understand? So, vairagya from the we never we say stay in the world. That's what I've been teaching all my students. There is no running away. This is it. In the five waves, you have to row your boat and not drown. And it is very difficult. So, get really smart. Understand those waves. Don't let them be, take you away. Sometimes wave of misery becomes and we become depressed. Wave of avidya comes and we lose our mind. It's always there actually. Wave of avidya is like the, uh, the biggest tsunami all the time. That's the water. Ignorance. Wave of asmita comes and going, going, going on one path we become confused. Wave of raga comes and we get stuck. And then wave of death. Hmm. Ah, we are having very good life. Then the doctor says, I think you have cancer. Oh, 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 doctor, I don't want to die. I will do anything. I will teach you entire Vedanta free. Save me. <laughs> now everything is gone. Huh? Sticking roads to something for me. I didn't let this person go and you go. No. 
That is why in the yogic Shaivite tradition especially, where Shiva is one of the greatest yogis, you know what we do? We go and sit in the funeral ground. We enjoy it. Reality. So why be scared? Face it. Then, Two more minutes. So my goal becomes to be have samyak, balanced perception of reality through detachment because without detachment I cannot even step away to have the correct perception. If I am, unless I, did, I take a few steps back, I cannot really have an objective decision process. Don't you think so? So some detachment, some vairagya, and then some discrimination with viveka. This will make me a yoga ruda, will make me a balanced yogic state of mind listening to the Atman. The lower self behaving itself with the Atman. My boat will stay afloat. When the time for death comes, I will say, my God, I made it. My boat didn't sink and I am still dry. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Bhuloka. Shall we end the satsang? <laughs> How many of you are now excited to kind of check out? More hands? Thank you. So how many of you are excited to stay dry in the boat of life through this ocean? Hands? Let's first begin with keeping our head above water. Every time these five waves come, catch it. And it's a wave. Don't take it too serious. Okay? Uh, yeah, you know, this. there's a... Uh,